I will present this paper, it's called the Implementation of a Novel Industrial Robotics Course and its Evaluation by Students. So my name is Manuel Silva and I'm a teacher here at ISEP, at the Department of Electrical Engineering. So this is the outline of the presentation. I will start with a brief presentation, then I will just present two or three ideas, two or three main ideas on state of the art in robotics education. And after that I will describe the course that we have here on industrial robotics, its organization, and its main results and some of the experience that I have had with the, the, my former students. I will finish with some conclusions and the acknowledgements. Okay, so regarding the situation that we have right now, what we are witnessing is an uh, increased uh, dissemination of robots in industry, not just in the industry, also in the services, but mainly in industry and we need to train people to operate and to program robots. But uh, what we see is that here in Portugal, and I believe that the problem is similar in other countries, I have been talking with other colleagues, we have some uh, lack of funding in the universities and in the higher education institutions to buy robots to be able to train, to train the, the students. So what we need is to find new ways to teach robots. We can give some more theoretical teaching with tools, with simulation tools, with MATLAB and stuff like that. But if we want to train students in practical uh, programming and operating of robots, we have to find new tools. And so that's how we got the new solution, let's say so, for the course that we give here at IZ. It's called Robin. Robin is industrial robotics. And this course is uh, an option it's offered to the students of the master in electrical engineering, although it has been already uh, attended by students from other uh, master courses. And our solution is to uh, make the practical training using a custom, uh, custom off-the-shelf simulator from uh, an industrial brand. In this case, we use the software from APU Robotics. So, regarding the state of the art, what we uh, can see if we look at the, the bibliography and if we make some search in the internet, is that there are several courses in higher education institutions across the world on mobile robots. We can see lots and lots and lots of courses on mobile robots. We can see courses on mobile robots not just for uh, students in the high education, but also in uh, colleges, in elementary schools, because mobile robots are very attractive for students. They uh, allow us to, um, let's say, uh, make students like uh, science and technology and math, stuff like that. But then what we see is that uh, if we go to industrial robots, we don't see lots of information and lots of courses on that. So mainly it's uh, mobile robots. And we also see that lots of those courses on mobile robots, especially if we want to uh, avoid the costs or the inherent costs of hardware, some uh, institutions have, for instance, laboratories on the web. We have some applications in the web, some remote laboratories. And we also have some software or some simulation software for teaching robotics. There are some uh, schools that use, for instance, Ybots, Gazebo, and stuff like that. But mainly, mainly always in the area of mobile robots. And so, what we see is that uh, courses on industrial robots are not usual. Okay, so. We, we can see that software uh, simulation applications are used for teaching several distinct subjects, physics, mathematics, mobile robots, but we can't see that on industrial robots. So what we decided to do was to, based, let's say, or inspired by the two examples, that for me are two exceptions. One is the Department of Industrial Technology in the University of Louisiana, and the other is the Virtual Sim Laboratory in Turkey to start using uh, an offline programming software for teaching robotics or industrial robotics. And so, what we have done is develop the course. The course has uh, five uh, hours per week. Two of them are theoretical classes, so we just present theoretical subjects on the theory of robotics, on industrial robotics. We uh, 
present to students some introduction to the subject. We talk a bit about uh, safety rules, applications, uh, grippers, types of manipulators and stuff like that. Then we have the tutorial classes that is just one hour per week on which the, the teacher gives a support to research work that is developed by groups of students on which they have to devise a specific solution for an application area. And then on the laboratory classes what we do is teach the students the principles of robot programming. And here is where we make use of the simulation software. So we divide these laboratory classes into periods and in the first periods what we see or what we, we Perform. This first period uh, it takes five weeks. We have five different instruction scripts, and those five instruction scripts make students learn the basics of robot programming and simulation. So they start by creating the world model. Okay, so they have here the real cell or the real robot, and they have to devise a model in the ABB Robot Studio. So they have to create their own virtual world. After that, they start by creating the targets, so the targets are the points where the robot must move in order to perform the program and perform some action. After this, they start developing the program, okay, so they have to learn how to program in Rapids, and they develop the program here in the simulator, and then what they do is simulate the, the robot program that they have developed in the simulation, and they, they simulate this program in the uh, ADB Robot Studio, and if the, the program is well developed later, they can download this program to the, the robots. And finally, they also have to create a mechanism. In this case, since we just had one week, they just create a very simple mechanism, it's just a gripper for the robots. But they also learn the basics of creating a new mechanism in the robot studio if they need to create a machine or a robot or something like that. So this is the first part, five weeks, when we for each of these topics, and then what they have is, uh, or what we see is that this software and the hardware, the combination of the software, the ABD Robot Studio and the hardware, our robots, they somehow uh, emulate the manufacturing environment because also in industry we are going from offline programming, sorry, from online programming to offline programming. So they already learn how to program the robots and they learn how to do it with simulation and offline. And this software allows them to teach. Uh, the, the basics of programming, they can make the mistakes in the simulation software, so they don't make those mistakes in the real robots. And after they learn some, some basics of programming, they have their programs working and they can test the programs on the real robots. And what we see is that the learning process is extraordinarily, extraordinarily fast. So the students are fully motivated, they somehow, they like to compete between each other, so everyone tries to develop their program faster, they try to go forwards, and uh, they also like the, the idea of uh, being able to represent their, their model, to create a very uh, perfect model of reality and representing it. And so this is the first, the first part of the course. Then, on the second part, so I, I'm saying that the teacher has two different roles in the different parts of the course, so in the first part, the teacher is more active, while the students are writing the scripts, the teacher has to support the students, uh, try to solve some doubts, uh, solve some problems, also give some, let's say, theoretical hints in the laboratories. But then on the second part, after those five weeks, we uh, assume that they have learned the basics of robot programming, and then they, ju they just uh, get a challenge. They have to develop a program for a robot. For instance, they have to pick up some parts and put those parts on a pallet receiving some signals to know when they should go to the to the, the ballot and when they can take the parts or not. And then on the second part, it takes 10 weeks, they just have that goal, that objective, and they have to develop the program for this. And the teacher here is just like a tutor. We just give them some hints, some ideas on how they can solve the problems, but we don't solve their problems. If they have problems, they have to solve them by themselves. They can either look at ADB manual, or they can look at the instruction scripts and sometimes they also discuss their problems with colleagues and what we see is that on the first two or three classes they are still waiting for the teacher to do something but when they see that in fact they have to solve their problems they start working. And what we have seen is that they in fact they like this kind of, of uh, approach. We have conducted a survey to the students of the last four academic years 
and what we have checked is that they prefer an hands-on course on which they in fact can uh, work with the equipment. In fact, they get very motivated when they know that they are going to work with a software from ABB, that it's the same software that is installed in lots of companies and when they know that they are going to work with a robot and they are going to do what they call, well, this is practical work, this is real. And they like it very much. And they also state that they learn much more with this kind of course where they have to solve their own problems uh, when they compare it to a lecture test style of curriculum on which we give them the, the subjects and then at the end they have a, a test or an exam to be uh, evaluated. They also state that the project that they developed in laboratories helped them to better understand the material or the topics that are covered on the, the, the lectures and they consider it to be a very good way to link the theory with the robot programming so they see in the theoretical classes they are introduced to, introduced to the subjects and then in the laboratories they can uh, check some of them and see how that works on reality. They also felt that uh, they learned a lot about industrial robotics in general and they state that they felt a huge increase in robotics and robot programming knowledge compared to the start of the course. So this is not, let's say, a big surprise because most of these students have never had robotics in their lives so for us it's it's just a, a, to check that in fact they have learned something. And just to finish, they say that their overall experience with attendance of this course is very good and they were willing to advise their students to uh, attend Robin in the next academic year. I, I, I can state that the course has been running for about six academic years. On the first year we had uh, about 17 students and the number has been growing and the last academic year we already had 66 students enrolled. So it's an optional course from the master. Uh, I believe that we are uh, having almost all master students attending this course. And besides the master in electrical engineering, we are having also students from the master in uh, uh, computer and medical engineering and from the, the instrumentation and measurements master. So, so. In the assessment survey, we also have an open question just to evaluate their satisfaction with the course and its organization. We let them state whatever they want in order for us to get also uh, more feedback. And we are, what we have seen in the, those uh, surveys is that there is like a, a consistent answer is that they always suggest for improvements to deepen the learning of RAPID. And so right now, on this last academic year that uh, finished in July, we started uh, teaching some uh, rapid, more in-depth uh, learning of rapid, also in the tutorial classes. So, regarding the, the experience, what we have seen, or our experience, that in fact hands-on courses on industrial robots are not usual, because it's very difficult to equip laboratories with robots. So, usually, uh, if we have a, a student to, to develop a program on a robot, it, we have two hours per week, we have 60 students, so if we have 20 students on each class, so if each of those students takes 10 minutes, 10 minutes times 20, we have 20, 200 minutes, so we don't have time for them to do anything. So in fact, the use of a software or a simulation software for programming the robot and for learning how to program the robot, it's a very good solution. So the time needed to program use it on the simulator. Each student has a simulator on its own laptop and then after the program is uh, developed they just have to test it online and they can do it in 5-10 minutes if everything goes well. So this for us is a very good solution. We have seen that the number of enrolled students is growing. The approval rates have been consistently high. The, another advantage is that the effects of developed programs are observed as students develop the programs in the simulator so if they make any mistake they see it uh, at that moment and this has also another very good advantage for us because here at is that we have lots of students that are uh, part-time uh, working students or some of them are also full work work time full-time working students so sometimes they don't come to classes but since they have the simulator with their own they can develop their programs at home, at night, at weekends, and then they just come here at the laboratories and they test the programs. Sometimes we also have, at, at least near the end of the semester, we also have the laboratory open two or more days besides the, the, the classes just for them to test the programs. So, uh, 
what we need to improve is that uh, the number of students has been increasing a lot, so the attendance in laboratory classes is much above what we initially expected, and right now we felt that we needed another robot to, to have the students testing their programs because we are, al are already facing, let's say, some bottlenecks. By the end of the semester we have lots of students trying to finish their work, they are all trying to test at the same time, and sometimes we live here at about midnight, midnight 30, okay, so this will be a, an idea to give to, to the boss. So regarding the conclusions, so we have here, uh, we have described the course on industrial robots that we are offered here at ISEP. So the main innovation is that we are using a custom off the shelf simulation software. So in our case it's ABB Robot Studio. Since we have an ABB robot, it could be another program, for instance, Google Sim or I don't know, Epson, something if we have another kind of, of robot. And this has been, uh, for us, it has been an excellent solution. Students, in fact, are learning lots of robots, of robots programming. They can learn also a bit of robot operation, and they can do it with just one robot on the laboratory, with one real robot on the, on the laboratory. So we can avoid delays in testing programs, avoid the cost association associated with robots, we can uh, avoid the problems with uh, safety and stuff like that. So this is our main ideas. And just some acknowledgements. I would like to acknowledge my previous students that were involved in this course and that had made several comments and suggestions on how to improve it. Also my former students Daniel, Rui, Cristian, José and Marco because some of these pictures are from their works. They were in fact the ones that made the, I would say some of the better works. And also ABB Portugal, in particular Ricardo Oliveira, José Marinez and Manuel Souza that they have uh, allowed us to use the software for free all these years. Okay. So